there is a difference between legal, illegal, and potentially legal immigration. Um, when you come to the border of the United States and you present yourself to the guards and you surrender and you say, I'm here to seek a, a refugee status, then you are applying for a legal status. Now, if you just bypass the border and you just run through it and hope that nobody will catch you and then you start living your life without being processed by the government, then that is what's considered illegal immigration. Now, we have to do a, a lot of different things to prevent illegal immigration, and I believe that not knowing who's coming in here, whose record uh, is coming here, what their real names are, what, what they do, I think that is dangerous for our communities. Yeah. And, but I do believe that there are several things that we can do. First, I think that there is a need to secure the border. I don't know how they're going to do it. I'm not an engineer, right? Uh, they, they can dig tunnels, they can do whatever. But w w the point is, we do need to secure the border because once you have that type of activity at the border, that type of illegal, potential illegal activity at the border, then you bring in these people who are desperate and people will take advantage of those folks. There's the potential of people being human trafficked, uh, organ trafficked, uh, weapons trafficked, drug trafficking, all those things going to the border because they're taking advantage of the desperate folks they're trying to go through there. Now, doing that is one thing. We also can revamp our legal system to allow people who are actually, they might not want to uh, surrender at the border because they think if I do surrender at the border, I'm not going to be given a chance, right? right. Um, so there is the possibility of revamping the legal system, making it better. Now that's the whole, you know, I'm going to revamp the legal, but I'm spending so much money on the illegal, wh where the funds going to come from? I don't know if they're, they're discussing that type of budget thing, considering our nation is in huge amounts of that. But we do need to figure out how we can make our immigration system safer and, and better. And it's not a matter of uh, this person deserves it or not. It's a matter of there's people actually being trafficked at the border. There's people actually going through danger and going through the desert and going through all of that. And how can we prevent that from happening today? That is a problem that we can prevent from happening from people dying today in that situation. And I think we should look at it from all angles. So for me, I think the heart of the immigration issue for me is that we've heard about the statistics that uh, the United States will become a majority minority country by 2050. The uh, Hispanic population will, you know, soon uh, remake really what um, the United States, you know, the average United States person, you know, what the aggregate would look like. Uh, the Asian American population is the fastest growing, you know, um, relative to who they are. And I think that there is some anxiety, you know, about that that the United States will look very different um, demographically. Mm -hmm. And for all of the wonderful words in our Constitution and our Declaration of Independence that I believe you know, guide me as much as you know, my faith does in, in a lot of ways, um, our, historically, our country has always protected, I think, you know, white American male folk over women even, over minorities, um, and yeah. that is, just as much a part of our history um, and our ethos as, as anything. And so I think at the heart of immigration is some level of concern about the remaking of the United States. And so when you talk about folks not coming to seek asylum properly and, and are going the other way, I look at that same issue and I think about what are ways we've choked off the ability for the number of folks to seek asylum, when we limit the number of judges that are able to sort of dedicate their time to what ways are we sort of bottlenecking this process? Not necessarily because we couldn't uh, afford more cases to be seen, more folks to be deemed, you know, whether it's an actual asylum case or not. Uh, but when you see folks making those decisions to risk being trafficked or to risk going into those situations, I think more about what is the United States doing to perpetuate that? What is the United States doing to uh, failing to allow for them to come, you know, more uh, easily legally? And ultimately, we have to decide when it comes to immigration, when it comes to the future of our country, is this a concern? Are we okay with the United States of America becoming a truly multicultural place? We always say that, but it hasn't exactly been um, possible. You know, there's been a lot of uh, institutional ways to, to prevent that um, from folks coming 
um, to positions of power or leadership, and that one day will not be the case. May I touch on something that you said, um, and as well, um, for me, honestly, it comes down to education mm. and taxes. You know, when we give tax breaks to the super rich, we are draining the resources. You know, we don't have enough money for resources as to fix immigration issues, to fix the education system in our country. We are, we need, we need education we, as, as to continue to grow as a country. You know, with technology, for example, you're talking about jobs being, well, we have new technology. We can create those more jobs if we just use the tools that we have. But we need money for that. So if multimillionaires and billionaires are getting tax breaks left and right, and the working person, like you're saying, the Ameri people are born here and they have no resources because they're working three, four jobs, so they never see their kids, or they have $500 in their savings account, well, that could be remedied with tax breaks. So, I, I mean, that's, I feel like, and we can, we can do better. We should do better. Uh, to me, one thing I really have a grave concern about this country is we have this culture in the last two decades have this anti-white male mentality in, in, in this country. It, I have grave concern for that because it to me it's some, it looks like a cons conspiracy. China don't even open the door allow you to get in. So we are coming to the most welcoming country in the entire whole world. As Asian, I can't even move to Japan. Japan not going to let me in. I can go to Korea, they not like let me in. I go to Middle East, they not let me in. The only place that let me in probably, I have a chance Western white Christian nation mm -hmm. let me in. But we are joining, as a minority, we are joining into the bandwagon of anti-white male. Mm -hmm. And that is, it's something since very, very odd. So if I can clarify briefly, um, it could be purple, intersex people, mm -hmm. if they happen to be the majority over the past 200 years and were, you know, maintaining their supremacy in institutional fashion, it has nothing to do with specifically, it's anyone who happens to be occupying um, a space of power and influence that doesn't allow for anyone else to come in. People with different perspectives, cultures can also rise, not necessarily at the expense of anyone else, but you know, I'm not against you, I'm for my community coming up. And so I think that's an important thing to clarify. It has nothing to do with who it is, but when it comes to any established entity that has maintained exclusive privilege and power at the expense of other folks, mm -hmm. as we begin to progress and recognize that that is not, it could be for some folks, but if we come as a country to recognize that that's not the future we want, then there is room to include other folks in those positions, not necessarily, again, in a zero-sum fashion. I think American, like my personal experience, uh, America is the most welcoming country in the entire whole world. And like I say, even within my own race, I would not have the opportunity I have right now here. I would not have the, the communist com, uh, country, absolutely, we are same race, we are the same culture. I absolutely have no chance can run an uh, office over there or have or even have a free speech. Right now the Chinese um, social media, anytime you say to criticize the government you got shut down, you don't have a free speech. Yeah. And there is the same race, the same cultures. And this is happening all over the world. And same in the Middle East. The same Middle East their same race govern their own people. So so the thing is saying um, Americans not I, I think America is the most inclusive one. I want to take exception to the American exceptionalism <laughs> <laughs> um, because I had the opportunity um, a couple years ago, four years ago, I had a friend who worked at the airlines who gave me free airfare anywhere in the world for a year. It was, this, it was an incredible gift. And I went to 12 countries and I was interviewing people, mostly um, gay people, about how their life was in those, those countries. And one of the things I learned is to listen more and to be quiet because we Americans have a reputation of being um, the know-it-all teenagers who think we're the best, but we're only a teenager, so we really don't know. So I think there's plenty of countries around the world that have it right in terms of prosperity and 
equality and freedom and there's this index that measures um, happiness. happiness, right? And there's a lot of Scandinavian countries that have high happiness. Um, Denmark and New Zealand have um, are the least corrupt countries in the world. So one of the things I learned when I was traveling was to drop this sense that that is so predominant that when I grew up with, which is America's the best. And actually both parties are are engaged in American exceptionalism. But I think that, like if you look at any measure, right? Um, education, immigration, wealth, happiness, we're not the top. We're, we're just not the top. And so I just wanted to take exception that, that we're the best. Right. I mean, we well, might, I think, I think, not to take away from your experience, I you know your experience in this country is much better than it was in China, mm -hmm. um, but there's just plenty of other countries around the world with very smart people that, that do a very good job with a lot of things and we don't have a corner on the market globally. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I use the term exception as opposed to the best, because you're absolutely right about those, those studies and those, those measurements that say, hey, reading-wise, math-wise. Um, but when I say exception, I guess I'm referring more to our inception as a country, mm -hmm. um, what our sort of character and personality and values are because of our way of government that has inspired so many other countries. Right. Um, sort of the closest thing we've come to realizing, you know, democracy and, you know, uh, having folks have the ability to rise when we talk about the American dream. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that is something people can sort of claim like we're able to claim. Right. So, you know, I think for exception, just my definition is less about, you know, do we have the smartest kids or, you know, um, the best transit system. It's, it's certainly more about our very unique um, story. Um, that we have to remember. We were uh, meant to be sort of leaders and we, we ought to continue to take on that challenge. I actually want to validate something you said because, you know, I come from a communist country. Mm -hmm. I lived here 30 years and I have not experienced a lot of uh, discrimination. I mean, mainly for my family because I am married to a woman. But what I will say is America is very unique. It's one of its kind. It is inclusive. You're right. Absolutely but has another side, okay? So it's like, if America was built by immigrants and slaves, right? That is the heart of America. But our heart does betray us mm -hmm. at times. So it's like, it's that betrayal that even though we're super inclusive and we want everybody to come here, we want that. We can't always have that because there's not enough for all of us. So I think that's, that's the part that rings truth for me. Mm -hmm.